Fertility has dropped worldwide at the same rate as sperm count has declined. How panicked should I be about this? Are your erections rigid enough for intercourse? Certainly sperm counts are falling. So there is a reason to be concerned. There'd be a lot to produce in here. The most important cause is the chemicals in our environment that can affect our body's natural hormones. Yeah, just keep on rolling until we get kicked out. But if they're like everywhere, you're exposed to it again and again and again. Hydroxypropyl, it's like, what is in all this stuff? Why do you need all this stuff? I think what we need now is outrage because the things that we're exposed to, we didn't ask for. Are doomsday preppers right? The brink of a worldwide Mysterious fertility monoliths crisis. have been appearing. Gun taxes could plague California. As clickbait headlines warp our view of the world, we're going down the rabbit hole to ask, how afraid should we really be? On this episode, a looming spermageddon. Epidemiologists have found humans across the globe are becoming increasingly less fertile. After finding Western men are only half as fertile as they were just 40 years ago. You're certainly going to have more and more men having trouble having children. There's been a lot of buzz over the years about a supposed spermageddon, but I hadn't really paid much attention to it until recently. Give me that back. Ah! Hey, stop that. My significant other and I recently became puppy parents, which sometimes feels like a test run to fatherhood. Millhouse. Ah! But for a generation who put off raising kids to nurture careers, a sperm again scenario seems apocalyptic. For like a long time we were taught, don't have a baby, then you'll ruin your life. And then now that we're in our 30s and we're thinking about having a baby, it's scary to think like, what if we can't? I arranged to sit down with Dr. Swan, who recently published a book encapsulating her many decades of research on falling sperm counts and declining reproductive health. What has been the trend of sperm count in the last couple of decades? Over the last basically 40 years, sperm count has dropped at a little bit faster than 1% per year. It went from 99 million sperm in a milliliter to 47, so that's half. It's still a lot of sperm, people will say, 47 million, but when you get below 40 million per milliliter, then you start having trouble conceiving. With such terrifying reports, I scheduled a urology appointment to definitively check my sperm count from a sample I would provide. As part of the process, I had to fill out a very personal questionnaire. During sexual intercourse, how often were you able to maintain your erection after you had penetrated, entered your partner? Okay, all right. Um, and then we were off to the doctors with a little bit of anxiety. I have an entire crew here who's, who's learning a lot about my semen. It's a little weird to be producing a sample when, you know, my colleagues are outside the room. So hopefully I don't have any, you know, performance anxiety. Hi, how are you? I'm here to meet with Dr. Kurgan. Are you producing in the office or did you bring this person? No, I was going to produce here. Okay. I'm producing video too. As I filled out more forms, I noticed several anxious couples in the waiting room. While this was kind of a fun experiment for me, this was some serious business for them. Hey, how are you? How you doing? Good. I finally met Dr. Kurgan, who gave me a brief tour around the office. This is, uh, you know, just thank you notes and season's greetings and a lot of couples that have been helped with fertility. This is anecdotal, but I found that women, when they give birth, they're super grateful and they send emails and this is my baby and all this stuff. And I don't even find out that the men <laughs> had babies. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. It is. I think it's a problem, I think. I see it time and time again where somebody will think that their sperm count correlates with how, much, how manly they are. Sure. And really, there's zero correlation. Anyway, so, you know, I just kind of go over this sure. stuff. No problems with ejaculation, fluid comes out? It comes out. Okay. Are you taller than your brother? I am, yeah. Uh, you smoke? Uh, occasionally. Occasionally I'll have a, 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 you know, a cigarette when we're out, you know, drinking. It's like, I'd say, a weekend, weekend cigarette. Okay. You have a couple of small things. You smoke, which is not good, but probably doesn't make you infertile, maybe can contribute to subfertility. Real subtle things like when you are a little bit taller as a man than your male siblings. Sometimes we think it's because you have less exposure to testosterone during puberty. That's yeah. interesting. So that's always been a thing with my brother and I, that I've always been, oh, the younger one and the taller one. We always like to compete growing up. We could have competed for sperm count. Well, that's, uh, that's a thing to do. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, let's go do a quick okay. exam of the other one. Cool. 
do you want them there for the exam? Or? Oh, well, what does the exam entail? Like? Well, your, your genitals, mostly. With a few red flags already hanging over me, I was worried what other deductions might occur from a physical exam. You don't have to take things all the way off, but usually we ask you to take your shirt and t-shirt upwards, uh, Okay. pants and underwear to around your knees. Okay. So if you'd like, let's close the door. <laughs> yeah. Not to scare the children around here. All right, give me a good. Mm. Okay, good. That did it? They did it. Okay. Watch your step. Oh, watch your cable here. One more. Mm. Okay. You want to scream dramatically? Ah. No? Okay. And one more. <coughs> okay. No hurries. That's it. Okay. How horrible was that? Well, I mean, a little, you know. I'd never do it, but okay. <laughs> so the, the things we look at at the exam, the size of the testicle is really important because that's like the factory that's making the, the final product, the sperm. It kind of goes from red, which is considered normal, to yellow, which... So this is extremely abnormal. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So and, and there's disorders where people have that. And you can see anything from, you know, testicles that are like that size to testicles which are, you know, I'm not a very good artist, but maybe something like that, okay. which is actually where you are. Oh. So, <laughs> That's you know, good, it doesn't uh, guarantee anything. Yeah, but, yeah. But it's better if you were to choose which one, which cards you were dealt, I'd choose this one. That's good. So the only other thing I would mention in you, and it's very common to find, on your left side, which is the more common side, you have a little bit of a varicocele. So on your left side, the veins, instead of, let's say, being this wide, they're a little bit wider. Okay, all right. But other than that, everything, that was, that was kind of the only thing that Correct. the red flag. As I walked with Dr. Kurgan to go produce my sample that would give me the clearest picture of my reproductive health, I remembered what Dr. Swan had warned me about. While I can choose to not have my weekend ciggy, other threats to my sperm count may be completely out of my control. What is causing the sperm to climb? For me, the most important cause is the chemicals in our environment that can affect our body's natural hormones. And they are everywhere in our daily lives. Dr. Swan is referring to endocrine disrupting chemicals, or EDCs, which interfere with the body's ability to make hormones. They can be devastating for sperm production, which uses the male sex hormone, testosterone. The EDCs that trouble Dr. Swan are the non-persistent chemicals that get washed out of our bodies, like phenyls and a class of chemicals used to make plastics more flexible called phthalates. Even though these chemicals wash out of our body quickly, they wreak havoc on both the male and female reproductive systems because they are everywhere in modern life. They could be in cleaning products, shower curtain liners, air fresheners, nonstick cookware, ATM receipts, and all over our food. Food is probably our major source of exposure. Phthalates are not chemically bound to plastic. They leave when they are warm, particularly. So if that head of lettuce was wrapped in plastic, it was sitting in a hot truck, being transported, those phthalates could come into the lettuce. But if they wash out, what effect would this really have on my sperm sample? We are worried about chronic exposure to phthalates because if they are like everywhere, you will be exposed to it all the time, you know? So it doesn't matter like if your body is able to wash it out, you're exposed to it again and again and again. Irene Balayan studies how phthalates affect behaviors in children. After we looked over the plastic on our table, Irene showed me an article that outlined new regulations on phthalates. It's about the companies that decided voluntarily to replace one phthalate with another one. DIMP for DHP, and we don't know a lot about DIMPs. And eventually DIMP could be replaced by PIMP, right? Exactly, or something else. Like for example, the same thing that they did that with joke, by the PIMP. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see how many EDCs are hiding in plain sight. So we very discreetly ditched our camera for a cell phone and Irene took me on a gorilla shopping spree. I think we can now film everything because yeah, nobody's, nobody's looking at us anymore. There's a, there's a shoplifter and now they're focused on her. While I was expecting the evening to be a slam dunk with reactions like this, probably, probably, that like, in reality, it was very confusing. It's so tiny. Whoa, what am I looking for? Oh my God, this is impossible to see. DHP, MIBP, MBZP, M MBP, no. We finally found one product that listed a phthalate in the super small print. Is DEHP a phthalate? DEHP is a phthalate, yeah. But we found a ton of products using the catch-all term fragrance. Fragrance may contain, what does it mean may contain? It might contain up to like 20 or 30% of phthalates. Wow. And we found a lot of parabens, a preservative that can also disrupt hormone production. It has methylparaben, propylparaben, okay, so another paraben. Oh, there's a paraben in this. Thank you for shopping with us. Later, we went to a grocery store, where Irene took note of all the food and plastic wrap that could be made of phthalates. This one, this one, yeah, might be. This material is everywhere, even on the mushrooms. 
So this wrapping... Potentially has it. When we found several examples of EDCs on our spree, I was a little disappointed by how ambiguous all of these products are in our process environment. We didn't find a ton of phthalates through the entire night. That leaves a question mark, and not, that's not necessarily definitive. Question mark doesn't necessarily mean that it's there. The regulations are not that much strong. And as we discussed earlier tonight, what, what happens is they target one phthalate, and then the industry switches to another phthalate. And then it looks like that we are, you know, chasing something that cannot be chased. While it's true that some substitutions have been deemed safe, like with this 2018 study from the EU that found that the replacement phthalate DINP warrants no classification for developmental toxicity, it's scary to think about how long these chemicals have existed in our products before the thumbs up is given. They're put into products without safety testing, and then we see if they cause harm. And it can take 10, 20, 30 years to demonstrate that harm, and all that time people are being exposed. Back at the doctor's office, it was time for a very personal, very revealing moment of truth. What exactly is my sperm count? Okay, to, to the production room? Okay. Can I, have the, can I have the team just see the production room? They're not gonna follow me in there, but. We'll wait just one second. Okay. Make sure there's nobody in there, please. <laughs> you don't have to fill it to the brim, in case you're wondering. Uh, that would be a lot to produce uh, Yeah, that's here. not possible. You're not a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my cup here, and I'm gonna um, go into the production room here. It's, I guess this is where the magic happens. I don't know, now I'm having performance anxiety, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off my mic, and I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes, yeah? All right, feel free to have a seat. Take some time. Okay, all right, see? What'd you say? Yeah, 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 if anybody asks, it took me 10 minutes. Hopefully we'll be done sooner, I wanna keep moving. All right, we'll see you guys in a minute. Are your erections rigid enough for intercourse? Huge balls. Yeah, I'm <laughs> One more. Okay. All right, I got something. It's really more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I don't know. That should be, you only need one, I guess, but um, that sucked. I didn't like that very much. That was pretty, um, it was just difficult to do that on command. And they'd see my lav cable and they'd be like, oh my god, there's a production here and I'm jizzing on camera, essentially. For all, for science, you know, but. Um, <laughs> that was my, that's not my favorite thing I've done uh, for this series. After I handed off my cup, a highly controlled sequence of events unfolds so my samples not mix with anyone else's before we reach the lab. In between the red flags during my exam <coughs> and my suspected chronic exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals, DHP, MIBP, I was extremely nervous about what we would find. If anything, it's make me nervous. There's so many things that could go. Uh, go oh wrong. yes, we get a lot of guys with a semen analysis, and they have the same reaction because yeah. they're extremely nervous. Yeah, I'm very about nervous. it. And the females have to go to such extensive testing that it is sometimes unfair. <laughs> you know. So we also assess what is called the volume. Oh, I'm very curious about my volume, actually. Yeah. Usually when you, you, I ejaculate, I'm like, oh, that was a lot. And this was like, I was like, when you have such a big cup for scale, I wasn't sure if that was no, a lot No, 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 the cup is just to make it easier for you. Nobody fills up the whole cup. We do the computer-assisted sperm analysis. It is a test to see the health of the reproductive system and also where things can be going wrong. As you can see, she's put one drop of... Uh, one drop is true. And she's going to take it to the microscope okay. and then examine it. This looks like... An excellent sound. Wow. Not just good. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Wow. It's Does great. Doesn't it, Tamika? Yes. <laughs> the volume was perfect. What was the volume at? 1.4. 1. 1. 1.4. So it's, is, that's a little bit under no, the average. No, no, don't worry okay. about it. Some of yeah. it goes here and they don't get oh, Okay. Here. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, I guess uh, whatever I wiped off on the Kleenex, that was probably the extra 0.1 yeah, milliliter. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You're absolutely on, uh, okay. on, on that. So and now. The color was fair gray. Oh, you were just making my day. These are my boys here, right? These Those are my boys are swimming. Boys. Oh, boys and girls. Boys and, that's right, boys mm -hmm. and girls. That's right, that's right. And they're swimming rapidly. Okay. They're swimming in a forward progression, which is all good. And so your motility is actually 93% modal. Wow. That is quite amazing. Our normal motility uh, in a regular sperm count is got to be more than 40%. They're not just moving in a circle. Where they're going, they're they're going somewhere. They look like it looks like a busy New York City street right now. It looks like everybody's just going to work. What I've been reading about is falling sperm counts over the last 40 years. Have you seen that firsthand? 
earlier, there were statistics showed that maybe 30% of, you know, in cases of infertility came from the male. I, I see a fall in the sperm count. Today I see much, much lower counts now. There are so many reasons and of course exposure to different, you plastics. know, to different plastics or different estrogenization products. So that may be causing the decline in sperm counts, in mortality and thereby maybe fertility in itself. Do you think that we should be afraid of, of falling sperm counts? As a population, certainly sperm counts are falling. So there is a reason to be concerned. I wouldn't suggest that young people start freezing semen, really. It's too much, too much. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just too much. But uh, if it continues the trend, God knows whether that would be uh, the way to go. We've got the sperm. We've got it. We've got it. Good, mo good motility. Mortality? A few days later, I followed up with Dr. Kurgan to go over the results. How did we do? How did my uh, how did my samples end up here? Well, I didn't do anything, but you did great. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Even though my results were fine, it's important to keep in mind I am but one data point in a statistical mosaic. A few weeks after we interviewed Dr. Swan, a team at Harvard published a paper that questioned elements of the 2017 study that was the backbone of her book. While consensus is yet to be determined on a possible all-out spermageddon, there does seem to be more agreement that the role of men in infertility has been greatly overlooked. And while that might make for a less compelling headline, as it goes with good science, data is studied, argued, defended, and studied again. And EDCs have been linked to a number of health issues, from various cancers to immune dysfunction to abnormalities in genital development. We should be demanding more transparency and safety for manufacturers before these products are put into the marketplace. The things that we're exposed to, we didn't ask for. We are the guinea pigs in this huge experiment that we haven't asked for. We got the sperm. Hey, it's Zeke. We're outside Genesis facility here in Brooklyn. We've got the sperm. We've got it. Who's pumped? I'm pumped. My little swimmers are swimming. <laughs>